Hello, welcome to Budget Model Railways and welcome to a new mini series that we're going to be doing on getting started with 3D printing. Now the printer that we're going to be using for this mini series is the Creality Ender 2 Pro because it is, in our opinion, the best beginner 3D printer at just over £100 and it is fantastic. But the process will be incredibly similar for any other printer that you're using and almost exactly the same if you're using any of the Creality Ender 3 series printers. So in this video, this is part one, we're going to be covering bed leveling, loading filament, the importance of good quality filament, what do all the settings on your printer actually do, and getting your first good quality prints. So keep watching. So the first step is to turn on your printer. And then on the Ender 2, you're greeted with the screen over here, and we're gonna dive into this screen now here to do some bed leveling. Now, the very original series Ender 2 that we started with six years ago had a lovely helpful feature in here where you could just set a setting to do bed leveling. But with the advancement of technology of BL Touch and automatic bed leveling, they kind of got rid of that in the, old, in the lower end printers like this to kind of force you into the higher end printers but i will always love manual bed leveling because it cannot go wrong you just tune it every now and then there's no software that breaks which has happened to us in the past with automatic bed leveling a lot of people don't like manual bed leveling because it is a bit of an art to get it right but once you sort of know what you're doing it's a lot simpler in my opinion so on the ender 2 pro we're going to press into the home button and we're going to go to motion and press the auto home button. And what that's going to do is move the nozzle and the bed and the Z axis, the vertical axis, so that it goes into the bottom left-hand corner of the print bed. And once it's parked itself in the bottom left corner, we're gonna go back into the motion settings and disable steppers. What this is going to do is allow us to freely move this and we need to make sure that we are not pushing or pulling on it vertically because we don't want to upset the vertical movement. Now, the other thing is that, you know, people are going to comment on this and say, don't do that. It sends back current into your printer. Funnily enough, uh, the inventors of the 3D printer actually thought about that and there are protection diodes in there. So doing this is not going to uh, break your printer. So don't worry about that. So what we're going to do is shift it into the bottom left corner so it's actually on your bed and then we need to get down to the level of the nozzle. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves a sheet of paper and we are going to position it under the nozzle there. Now, if you can't get the sheet of paper between the nozzle and the bed, that means that your bed is too high. So this red wheel down here, you need to turn it right so that it tightens up and lowers the bed. If you can get the paper under completely freely, then you need to spin the nozzle, uh, spin the wheel left to raise the bed. And you need to do that until the nozzle just grips the paper there, and then slide it back slightly so you can pull the paper out. Just feeling a little bit of friction there between the nozzle and the bed. And then we are going to move either the bed or the nozzle to another corner and repeat the process again. You can see here, I can't quite get my paper underneath there. So I'm gonna need to tighten up the wheel just a little bit like that. And we're going to repeat that for all four corners. Now, once you've repeated that process on all four corners, I'd recommend doing it once in the middle, as this is the most important area where you're going to be printing the most. And remembering that to raise or lower the middle, you need to equally adjust each four of the screws to raise and lower the bed uniformly. So that's great. The bed is now pretty much level. We will tune it slightly as we're going, but the next step is going to be to load our filament. So when you buy your printer, you'll almost always get given a small coil of filament like this. If you've bought a more expensive printer, you may well get a larger quantity, but the key takeaway with the filament that you get is it's usually very cheap and not very good quality. So that is where today's video sponsor is gonna come in. Now Sunlu produces a massive range of 3D printing filament, and they are the company that we personally have been using since we started making our 3D printed kits. We have a photo somewhere, I'll add it in, 
of a pile of their boxes as tall as my dad. It really is high quality stuff and they were kind enough to send us a few extra samples that we don't usually have to feature in this video. They go all the way from the boring grey that we use on our kits all the way up to my personal favourite which is carbon fibre infused composite PLA filament which is great for printing really strong kits. All of their filament comes in recycled cardboard boxes with vacuum packed filament to ensure that it doesn't get moist from the outside surroundings. So as you can see they have loads of different colours and materials although when you're starting out we'd only recommend using PLA as it is much easier to work with. But we cannot recommend Sunloo filament enough. We have used them since we started and they've been amazing quality filament the entire time. So really do make sure that when you start out 3D printing pick yourself up a roll of Sunloo 3D printing filament because it is the best that we have ever used. So we'll get back to the 3D printing. Before we load the filament the first step is going to be to heat up the nozzle. Now because we're going to print our test print straight after this we may as well heat up the nozzle and preheat the bed. So we're going to go into the temperature settings here and then just go down to preheat PLA and preheat PLA again. And you can see the nozzle is going to heat up to 200 and the bed's going to heat up to 60 there. The numbers down here are the current temperature. So nozzle is currently at 29 and climbing, bed's 23 and climbing. The bed takes longer to heat up because it's a much larger surface area, much larger volume that it's got to heat, whereas the nozzle has only got to heat the tiny heat block. So we'll let that heat up. So to load up our filament, we're going to take out the filament from the holder. And then what I'd usually say is, you can see on the end here, it's a little bit deformed, is I'd usually chop off just a couple of centimetres off the end of a new roll of filament, or if you've used it before, because it can be a little bit deformed and that can jam in the printer. We're then going to hook it onto our reel and bring it over to our extruder arm. So over at the extruder arm here, we're going to get our filament, push it through the extruder arm, pull in the lever and push our filament in between these two wheels and get it to start going through the tube. We're then going to keep pushing the filament through until we see it come out the end of the nozzle there. Like that. Now we've got the filament loaded and the bed leveled. So at this point, I'd recommend that you load in the SD card that came with your printer and you print the test file that is already on the card. This is the file that will be made by the printer's company. So this is the file that should work. And this is a great way to just make sure that your printer is fully set up. Now, because I've been using this printer for a long time, that test file is long gone off this SD card. So I am just going to print something random here and you can see how to do it and then press print and the printer will get on with it. As we can see there, if we've done all of our bed leveling right and loaded our filament correctly, it's going to start printing, which as we can see, it is. So then we're just going to wait for that to print and take a look at the quality of it afterwards. And we can see here that the print is finished and it came out pretty nicely. So we can just pop these buffers off now. Now you can see here that my brim stayed behind so that probably means that my bed is a little bit too close to the nozzle. So I'm just going to tune that slightly and drop the bed just a little bit. And that's all you need to do with manual bed leveling is just keep taking a note of how the print looks. Does it look a bit squashed at the bottom? Does it look like it didn't stick to the bed properly? And just adjust the bed accordingly. So now you've printed your first test print which was ideally the test file that came directly with your printer. We're just going to look a little bit deeper into some of the settings on the printer itself before we go into getting your own print on here. So let's head over to the screen again. So going back in, motion. We've been here before, this is where you can auto home it. It's also where you can move an individual access, be it the X, Y, Z, or move filament in and out of the extruder. But obviously at the moment, it's not hot enough. If we go back, we have auto home, which we know, disable steppers, which just turns the motors off. And you can also home each individual axis, as well as actually a setting that I have just discovered here called load filament that in all the months I've owned this printer didn't actually know existed. So yeah, use that if you want to load your filament uh, and the unload filament option. Don't even know my own printer, clearly. If we go into temperature settings, you can directly change the temperature for just the nozzle. 
or the bed. You can control the fan speed, which is for the cooling fan, and you can preheat your temperatures. Print from media is where you can find all your prints. So you go through all the cards. And then configuration, which is where we're gonna spend a little bit of time here. Specifically in the advanced settings. So set home offsets, leave. Do not touch that. The velocity settings. Now this states your maximum velocities, but we'll have a look at this in the next episode because these can actually be changed during your print. So for now, we're gonna leave those. The acceleration. Again, we're gonna leave this because this can be tuned individually for each print to get the best results. And the same with the jerk. The steps per millimeter. For the most part, again, you're going to want to leave this B. I'll leave this here so you can copy them over if for some reason you change them. But this is just how many steps of the motor to get this much distance. Now this would be calibrated out of the factory. So only mess with this if you know you have an error with your motors spinning too much or not enough. Down here in the temperature. Now this is where you can do something called a PID tune and what this does is it calibrates your temperature sensors and your heating elements to ensure that you have the best setting for your environment. So I'd recommend running a PID auto-tune for the extruder and the bed if you move your printer to a new room or a new place. Or for my example in the shed here, I do this sort of once a month because the temperature changes a lot in here over the course of the year. Uh, in the winter, it requires a lot more power to get up to temperature because it's very cold in the shed. Whereas in the summer, it's quite hot in the shed. It requires less power. So I'd run a PID auto-tune, which you very simply just press. Adjust that to the temperature that you're always printing with, which in our case is going to be 200 degrees. And it will do that all automatically. So I'm just going to wait for that to finish now. Okay, so the auto-tune is finished. So let's have a look at a couple of the other settings before we save all of our changes. I'm going to go back into configuration. This time we're not going to go into advanced settings though. Here you can change the default settings for what you want preheat PLA to be. So in my case here, I actually print PLA with a bed of 50. So I'm going to drop that and my nozzle of 20 is correct. And we can press there to store the settings. You can do the same for ABS, which I rarely print with, um, but I will just change it to the settings that I print ABS with here and again store the settings then down there at the bottom we have a couple of others we can restore the default settings if you think you've messed up we can also change the language we can load settings from an sd card although i'd avoid doing this because you don't necessarily know what you're installing um, and then there is just a default store settings button to store anything that you've changed I forgot to mention here, we can also turn the power outage recovery mode on or off, but I'd always leave this on if I were you. It just means that if you have a power outage, you knock the plug, which I've done so many times. Um, when it stops, the printer will carry on. It will not lose your print. And to be honest, you can't really tell where it stopped and where it started again. It's got so good these days that you cannot notice the join line at all. And the last thing we're going to see here is the about printer where we can just see the version of your firmware, how many extruders you have, uh, and the information about your motherboard. So that's all there is for the printer settings. So thank you very much for everyone watching the video and thank you again to Sunlu 3D Printer Filament for sponsoring this video. So stay ready for next time when we will be looking at Cura Slicer software and printing your own models that you can download off of the internet. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.